Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna crack local passwords using John the Ripper, which is actually one of the more powerful password cracking tools available. If we're lucky enough to access password hashes during a professional penetration test, we need to know how to crack those and John the Ripper will help. The process is actually very straightforward, so let's just jump right into it. So on the screen right now is a Linux password hash file. Each user in that file has an associated encrypted hash, and that hash value is based on their original password. To clear up a typical misconception is that the value we see here is not the password in an encrypted format, but rather a hash which is designed to be irreversible. What that means is in order to find out what the password is, we have to take a word, we have to hash it, then we compare that hash to the value that we see in the hash file. If the hashes match, we know what the password is. If it doesn't match, we have to try another value. While the process is actually simple, it does take a lot of computational power and time. So the company that I work at actually has a system dedicated solely just to performing local password attacks using John the Ripper. That system has over a dozen graphic cards whose whole purpose is to run John the Ripper against password hashes. So we're gonna start with a very basic example. So you can download this file and actually others that contain hashes on our website at pentest.tv. And while you're there, make sure to sign up for free training and watch other tutorials deemed not suitable for YouTube. We also have a Discord server that you need to check out as well, and all the links are in the description. So we can see that in the file, there's just a few hashes. These are actually extremely weak passwords, but unfortunately, weak passwords are still used within enterprise environments. However, this is gonna be a quick and easy way to demonstrate how to use John the Ripper. So we need to tell John the Ripper which file has hashes within it, and then just let it run. Notice that John the Ripper has a default word list that it uses, which can be found at the directory slash user slash share slash John. We can also see that John automatically detected the hash type and then started the cracking process. This isn't actually always the case, but it guesses correctly most of the time. So at some point, John will exhaust the word list and then go into what they call incremental mode. What it's trying to do is generate random words to test and then brute force against them, which you can see here. If we reach incremental mode within John the Ripper, we're actually working too hard within the confines of a professional penetration test. And what we really should do is switch to a new word list or just give up and move on to the next step within our penetration testing methodology. So a quick note about how John the Ripper actually stores successful cracked hashes. So within our home directory is a directory created by John the Ripper. Within that folder is a file that contains all the cracked hashes and the associated plain text version of those hashes, as you can see here. So using a more robust word list can actually significantly improve our cracking process. So let's take a look at a larger word list, which in this case is known as Rockio. We see that it actually contains over 14 million passwords, which we're gonna use as our word list to see if we can extract the other passwords from our list of hashes. So once we let John the Ripper finish, we can see that it identified two additional passwords, leaving us with just one unknown. I already mentioned the .pot file, but there's actually another way to see what we've successfully cracked using the show flag, as you can see here. This associates the username with the password just for convenience sake. So most likely you're gonna encounter different types of hashes. So John supports a lot of different formats and you can see the type just simply using the format option. So if we use our password file again and then just specify the format, we're gonna get the same results. So it's actually pretty important to understand the different types of hashes and being able to identify them pretty quickly. So John doesn't always know the application used to hash the passwords, so it just performs a best guess. If we know what the format is beforehand, and in reality we should, since we're the ones that collected the hashes during a professional penetration test, we can make things easier for John the Ripper to do its job by identifying what format to use. So this was just a very quick introduction to John the Ripper, which is actually a tool every security professional should understand how to use. Remember to visit Pentest TV to download the hashes that we used in this example. And again, there's other ones online at that website that you can use to practice within your lab. 
Make sure, as always, that when you use these techniques outside of the lab, that you're doing so ethically and only within the scope of a professional penetration test and only with permission of the data owners. With that, thanks for watching and happy hacking.